In Space Watch, astronauts are currently working outside the International Space Station, nearly 250 miles above our heads. NASA astronauts Nick Haig and Christina Koch floated outside earlier yesterday. She was supposed to go out with Anne McLean, but there weren't enough medium suits readily available, so the first all-female spacewalk had to be scrapped. The U.S. astronauts will work to install powerful lithium-ion batteries for one pair of the station's solar arrays. A third spacewalk is planned for April 8th, and that will also be mixed gender. So for more on this, we want to bring in CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. He's following the latest from uh, Merritt Island, Florida, just outside of the Kennedy Space Center. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we've got Nick Haig. Uh, Christina Cook. We've been actually having a debate about how you say her name. Is it, is it Cook? <laughs> it's pronounced Cook. That's right. All right. So they're carrying out this mission, installing uh, these powerful lithium ion lithium ion batteries, presumably not the ones that were in any of those scooters or uh, Samsung not. phones that kept on exploding. <laughs> um, so explain to us what they're doing, why this is important. Well, you know, the space station was launched. They started building this thing back in 1998. So if you think about it, it's been up there a long time. They knew all along that eventually they'd have to replace the batteries because like with anybody's batteries in your cell phone, sooner or later they lose the ability to hold a charge. Now, the station was launched with 48 nickel hydrogen batteries. They're arranged in groups of 12, four groups of 12 for each of the four big wings of the solar panels that are on the station. They're replacing them with these lithium ion batteries that are half the size. So they're only gonna use 24 new batteries to replace the 48 older batteries. So they're in the process of doing that. It's going to take many spacewalks. The, the first set was back in 2017. <coughs> this is the second set, and then there'll be two more after this. So as you say, there was supposed to be uh, this all-female spacewalk. Yeah. Um, we were all excited about it, Bill. We talked about it last week. Uh, I, you know, I think it, you know, on the face of it, it sounds a little silly. Why weren't they prepared to know that there were different sized, you know, people that were going to be up in space and they were women? But explain really sort of the, the, the rationale why this didn't work out. Well, you know, I think NASA was really caught off guard by the the. I guess the backlash you could have, you could say when they when they canceled the all-female spacewalk. But to the people at NASA, this was this was kind of business as usual. Ann McLean had trained in a in an upper torso space suit that was classified as a large, and in the water tank in Houston, she didn't have any problem with that. Uh, she went out in the medium upper body suit uh, last week in her first spacewalk and decided that was much better for her in terms of her ability to reach grab these big components and move them around. There are other suits on board that can be mediums, but they are not set up yet for this spacewalk because NASA assumed she was going to use the large like she did before and that, uh, that Christina Cook was going to use the medium as always planned. Uh, so they just didn't have time to reconfigure one of the other suits. It takes about 12 hours. You might say, why so long? But they have to move around coolant lines in this upper torso make lots of different adjustments, and then they have to go back and test all those systems. It takes about 12 hours uh, to resize a suit. So when McLean came back in and said, hey, I don't want to go out in the large suit. I want the medium after all. They just said, well, that's fine, and, and you can go out on the on the next spacewalk on April 8th, and we'll just let Nick Haig take your place on this one. So it's, it's a really complicated story to tell. It's kind of a simple concept, but it definitely generated a lot of interest, no question. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's understandable, though I think a lot of people were pretty disappointed. Um, but let me ask you something about what uh, Vice President Mike Pence announced the other day, that the U.S. plans to move up its timeline to land on the moon. They, you know, we want to yeah. do it in, within five years, uh, the vice president said. Why is this a priority? You know, I think the Trump administration really wants to make a, a major accomplishment in space uh, uh, when he's in office. Um, you know, NASA was thinking kind of kind of long-term planning, we'll get people back on the moon around 2028. And, and, and Pence basically came and told him, and remember, Pence is the chairman of the National Space Council. This is the body that's charged with setting national space policy. Uh, he gave a he gave a talk at a meeting uh, earlier this week where he said, "Hey, that's just not good enough. Uh, we want you to get this going faster. And we want you to be back on the moon within five years." But I have to tell you, I don't I don't know how NASA can do that without a huge increase in spending. I just I just mm -hmm. don't. It's hard to visualize this actually happening. I think he certainly wanted to get them going. You know, kind of light a fire under it. Whether he really believes they can get there in five years or not, I don't know. So, Bill, a couple of things. One, uh, remind 
folks why we stopped sending people to the moon more than 40 years ago. And my thought was, well, if you've already done it and you're always up in space in the ISS. Uh, how hard is it to just go a couple of hundred miles and head to the moon <laughs> and, you know, have a moon landing? Because it's not like it's a it's, it's the first. in the same neighborhood. It, it's in the same neighborhood. Right. Uh, but, I, you know, well, I, but I guess my feeling is that, like, look, we've already done it. Uh, we've proven that we can yeah. do it. Uh, so how hard is it to do it again? Why five years? Well, I'll tell you what, how long do you have to talk about this? Oh, Lord, okay. <laughs> it would take a while, but remember, we're not talking a few hundred miles where the station is. We're talking a few hundred thousand miles. And we're talking about landing spacecraft on the surface of another world with its own gravity field and all the complexities of that. You're right, we have been there, done that in the past with an enormously expensive program called Apollo that in today's dollars probably cost upwards of $150 billion wow. to send those missions to the moon. Now, you know, and the reason we haven't been back since then is, A, it was enormously expensive, but B, it was really the, the goal of the space race, the Cold War space race, space race with the Soviet Union, and Apollo 11 ended that race. Mm -hmm. We won. And so there wasn't, I think, a lot of political support for maintaining a program that cost that much money. Now, the goal now is to do it much less expensively with commercial partners. You know, think about SpaceX and Boeing, United Launch Alliance, all these big aerospace companies. NASA wants to get commercial industry back involved in this again, go back to the moon, but this time, instead of just putting boots on the surface and proving they can do it, they'd really like to establish a long-term presence. They want to build a mini space station around the moon. They want to send robotic landers down, eventually people. And they're thinking things like, can we mine resources on the moon? Can we use it as a training ground before jumping off on flights to Mars? Uh, so they're really hot to do it. But I think the five-year goal is going to be quite a challenge. That that one that one we'll have to wait and see. And I think I also heard that one of the priorities is to hopefully no longer have to depend on the Soyuz program and develop um, a vehicle that w that will allow the U.S. to take its own astronauts up to the International Space Station. So those well, are two sort of pretty big issues. I got to wonder if we're sort of look pivoting at the moon landing. Are we not prioritizing other things that NASA would like to do? No, no, you, you were kind of mixing apples and oranges a okay. little bit here. The, the program to replace the, uh, our dependence on the Soyuz is called the Commercial Crew Program, and that's going on all along on its own. Yeah. Uh, as you remember, SpaceX just launched their commercial cruise ship called Crew Dragon on an uncrewed test flight a few weeks ago, and they hope to launch the first astronauts this summer. Boeing is building another one of these commercial cruise ships, but they're only good to go to the space station. They're only to get astronauts from Earth's surface up to low Earth orbit. To go to the moon, NASA wants to build a gigantic new rocket called the Space Launch System, SLS, and they're gonna use a, a much more sophisticated capsule called Orion it's also already under construction uh, to get people to the moon, along with that mini space station I was talking about. So it's it's really, it's like they're offloading uh, the transportation to low Earth orbit. Let's let private industry do that. NASA then would focus on exploration and build the rockets and spacecraft to go on back to the moon. Hmm. Fascinating. Really fascinating stuff. Yeah, Bill, thank you so much. Sure thing.